What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ninja Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Shells. Brian, although it may seem to me anyway that there is really no interest in no what the MCU is doing, for me anyway, I have no interest. Really, I don't. But I saw the Loki season two trailer and Brian it got me curious somewhat excited to see the performances of certain characters certainly the trailer did a great job of showing us stuff that we've always we always questioned in terms of Miss Minutes and her character because she was always good now we'll probably get some sort of more info as to who she is or who she works for. It just gets us, especially me, somewhat excited to see what this this season two will be. And and curious because Brian, again, uh, we don't have the same people. I don't think it was a showrunner. I don't think we have the same showrunner as before. So I'm curious if we will see, I don't know, a difference that is towards the downside compared to what we got for for Loki season one. Because I thought for me, Brian, out of all the shows, Loki for me was one of the top ones. Well, I think Loki is the best one. I mean, I think Loki is the best Marvel show by a pretty wide margin. Um, And I think it, it, given what's happened in the last few years since it's probably only grown in stature to where I did think it was encouraging that the, the the viewership of the trailer was as high as it was. It kind of shows you that despite the failings of the MCU, that particular character and the credibility of that show is, has people excited to see that return. But you know, the way things are, I mean, this is kind of the, the kind of the last stand. You know, if this, yeah. if this, with as you say, with a new showrunner, no, 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 Kate Heron, no Michael Waldron, this go around. If you don't have, if you have a major drop off in quality in this show, like I don't know where that leaves us. Now, you know, Hiddleston's never bad. Uh, Owen Wilson's been, you know, obviously been quite, quite good as Mobius. Uh, they were very careful to keep Jonathan Majors' screen time very limited in this trailer, mm-hmm. so you get a very brief glimpse of Victor Timely with one, one line. But, you know, and you could say I'm okay with that because we don't need to see the villain right now. But obviously, I think some of that's because of his legal troubles. They're they're not wanting to put him front and center uh, in this show, even though he will be in it quite a bit. Um, but no, it, it, the I think, is- Brian, I think, that Brian, that's more strategic. Not it, It's more to get people curious about his character rather than hiding him. Okay. Because I think that's the, that's the angle they're playing because... I think that's the angle, and it makes sense for me to, to for them to do that and just show him a little bit because we yeah. saw, didn't we see a, a small snippet of it was a, I think it was an after credit scene for Multiverse of Madness or one of them I don't know, yeah, uh, or Quantum Mania actually. Um, the after credit scene certainly had us intrigued, and now we see a little bit more. So. Yeah, no, no. if we just take the legal stuff away, like I'm not questioning his performance. That's going to be great. I'm, I'm happy to see that. I'm interested to see like, they are changing the medium a little bit because of the time travel historical element. You know, the, thing, the biggest thing that jumped out to me, I think, just in terms of a, maybe a risk or a change they're making is whereas the first season was very cosmic, right? They were on these different planets with really no connection to Earth at all. So everything looked very alien. This is obviously like you're stepping back through time. So you see 70s gear, you see 20s gear. Like, I'm curious to see how that works with this particular character. But, I mean, what they showed on screen definitely seemed very true to the spirit of the first season, which was great. Uh, And obviously you get sort of the Kiai Kwan, um, I don't know if it's cameo or not, but his his appearance at the start of it, um, I think, is is also sort of of note. So, no, I... I'm excited. I can't wait for it. But at this point, I'm also like a little bit scared just because I feel like things have gone so badly that if this now <laughs> starts to, to sink as well, then there's really nothing. I just, I don't know what's left. I really don't know what's left, but but I'm hopeful. 
Yes, 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 yes. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting show. Because uh, you can't go nowhere lower than Secret Invasion. No. Yeah, what do you hope this show accomplishes, I guess, given where we are on the MCU? Really, Brian? I have no idea. I just want to see what the performance is. That's it, really. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. Like, uh, I mean, there's certain there's certainly some elements that would probably be surprising in terms of diving deeper into, I guess, the lore, maybe, and then seeing Easter eggs and things of that nature, things that they mentioned. But where it goes, I really don't care right now because it can go anywhere, and it's not going to make sense. Yeah, I think in some ways the less connected this is to some of the other multiverse stuff we've seen, the better. I mean, obviously there's a Kang connection. We can't get away from that. But yeah, I'd rather almost just, I'm almost hoping this is a little more of a self-contained um, Loki, sto Loki-centric Loki story. And I'll be quite content with that because I think, the, as you say, the, the performers are going to be, you know, on point. I'm not worried about that. Um, and I think like, you know, the action, the little bit of action they showed seemed very true again to the spirit of the character. And then I just want to see what Jonathan Majors has cooked up for, for the, this version or versions of Kang that we get. But I think, you know, the more this kind of gets bogged down by the mess of the rest of the multiversal story, I think the worse off this show is going to be. So I'm kind of hoping that's pushed more to the side um, for this go around. So I don't know. What do you think Loki season two of this successful can do to the MCU? Or do for the MCU? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I'm actually going to say not much. I, I think the people's faith is pretty low, and I think mine would remain pretty low. I think it would just, all I would just say is, you know, because Hiddleston's also an executive producer on this, and I don't think that's a small thing. I mean, he's been in this character now for over 10 years, and so he has a pretty good sense of how he wants to play it, regardless of how the show is being run or written. So I think... I think if this show remains very high level, I would sort of look in his direction and say, like, well... At least he kind of knows what works for, for this character. And as long as this character is around, I'll watch that. But I think it says something about the MCU that the most appointment viewing character you arguably have right now is Loki. Like, it's not any Avenger. It's not, you know, it, it really is this this sort of anti-hero character. But it's not, I don't believe it's sustainable. No, I agree. It doesn't. That's why I don't think it leads you anywhere. It's just... Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you could talk him into a Loki season three. I don't know, but like, and I would show up for it. But I, I just, yeah, I just don't think it really saves anything more broadly, other than it's just like, oh, Marvel is still capable of making something good. Yeah. This is the first time where an ensemble needs to be replaced, and not just one character. Like James Bond, you like every ten, every ten years you get a new set for a new storyline in Earth five, six, seven, eight. I don't know, but you do something different according to the, some of the storylines in the comic books, and I'm good to go with that, man. Not this mess that you're trying to. This is not General Hospital. This is not what's what's that up? This it, you just can't keep going. Well, that's the biggest difference, though, between comics and what they're trying to do, right, is in the comics, it's understood that a writer comes in or an illustrator comes in and there's an arc. So you can tolerate, OK, you want to you want to make this character totally different for the issues that you're going to write. And then we get to the end of that and a new writer comes in and we're prepared already for you to say, like, all right, don't, forget about that. I'm just going to I'm going to do something else over here. That's mm. fine. But you they don't have the luxury of that. Like, they don't have the luxury of like, hey, if we come in and, and do this next movie, we can tell you, forget about everything else that happened. That's not how they've set this up. Certainly not. But I... <sighs> but they kind of need it. <laughs> the end of it, Brian, should have been... Like, on the capper should have been No Way Home. Then start some other new stuff. You went on a route that I thought you were going to go certain places where I thought it made sense. But you took us to certain places with certain characters and certain situations that we weren't expecting. Now we don't know what the hell is going to happen. And what we see is very, very underwhelming. So let's see. Let's see. We'll see you next time on another Gem Report. The show goes on! Yeah!